Hi everybody, in this video I want to talk about uh, some of the differences that you will see in an advanced functions course compared to a grade 10 and 11 course. And let me just go over the first difference uh, or the first issue that we have when we uh, think about uh, drawing complex uh, polynomial uh, functions. And, but to, to illustrate, let me just start out with something that you would have seen in grade 10. Let's, let's say, for example, you had a parabola. I don't like that one, actually. Let's say you had a parabola that did something like this, that had x-intercepts at 8, comma, 0, and let's also say at, um, for argument's sake, uh, 3, comma, 0. Okay, and let's just say that the equation that modeled this parabola would be uh, y equals uh, negative 1 x minus 3 x minus 8. Now, if I was graphing this parabola and I wanted to uh, know where the vertex was because I wanted to draw it properly, a really important consideration would be to get both the x-coordinate of the vertex and the y-coordinate of the vertex. Because if you have those, then you can properly say, oh yes, my graph goes up to this height right here, and I've drawn it correctly. I mean, I know it opens down because of the negative one there, but my question would be, how do you know it doesn't go all the way up here? You know, How do you know it doesn't go like this or something? Right, and that's that problem is easily um, solved algebraically because if you remember uh, what happened in um, grade ten math was the way that we find um, the x coordinate of a vertex is we just take the midpoint that exists between our x intercepts. Now, obviously, if you don't have x-intercepts, that's a whole other problem, but we're not dealing with that now. We're dealing with stuff that does have x-intercepts. And so the way that we found the x-coordinate of the vertex was we took our x-intercepts together and we took the average of them. Because remember, the factored form is like y equals a x minus r x minus s, right? So you just take your r and your s, which are your x-intercepts, you add them together and divide by 2, and the average of those would represent the uh, x-coordinate of your vertex, the midpoint between your x-intercepts. And parabolas had that nice feature of being symmetrical um, inside of their x-intercepts, so that we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex would always be located directly in between your x-intercepts from an x perspective. So in this case, we would just say, well, it's 3 plus 8 over 2, which is 11 over 2, and of course 11 over 2 is 5.5, .5, so we would know that the x-coordinate of the vertex in our parabola would be equal to 5.5, .5. and then and then if we wanted to figure out the y-coordinate of our vertex, that wouldn't be a challenge at all because it would be easy because all we would do is we would just plug um, the value of x equals 5.5 .5 into our original equation. So we would say y sub v equals negative 1, 5.5, .5, you know, uh, minus 3, bracket 5.5 .5 minus 8, and if we did it, the math on that really quickly, what we'd find is we get 5.5 .5 minus 3 is 2.5 times negative 1 times negative 2.5, because that's what 5.5 .5 minus 8 is. We get positive 6.25. Okay, and everything's good there with the parabola. But why am I doing this video? Well, I'm doing this video because things, you know, when it comes to higher degree uh, functions, such as cubics and cortex, things aren't unfortunately quite so easy. And uh, so what I wanna say is like, imagine you have this cubic function here and um, I've just told you the uh, x-intercept, right? And you know the end behavior. Um, in other words, you know it has a positive leading coefficient. But then if you're trying to draw an accurate sketch of your cubic function, right? One thing that would be extremely important would be to uh, know how high is my maximum? You know, is it like this maximum that we see here? Is it way up here or is it down here or is it down here? How do I know that? And how low is my minimum? Like I just drew it in, right? I said, uh, somebody might say to me, you know, there's a cubic function that has the, uh, 
x-intercepts as follows. It's got an a value, and it's like uh, x plus 6, right? So that's like negative 6 right there. Uh, x minus 1 and uh, x minus 4. So you basically got four here and you got one. And then it said, I tell you, like, and it has a positive leading coefficient. So then you're like, okay, well, it's got a positive leading coefficient, so it must go in this direction. But my question, once again, is how do I know that it doesn't do something like this? How do I know that it doesn't do something like that? Okay, and, it, and if so, how do I get that? Well, okay, so the first thing to understand is that... Um, at this point, we don't have a nice tool set in your math bag of tricks that will tell you that nice and easily. It's not like parabolas where you can just take the midpoint of your x-intercepts, add them together, and divide by 2. Let me really state this clearly. When it comes to cubic functions and quartic functions that have this kind of wavy behavior, there is no guarantee that the x-coordinate of these local maximums and local minimums will be exactly in between your x-intercepts. They might look close to being exactly in between them, but there is no guarantee. In fact, on many, many occasions, they are not exactly symmetrical and they're not located in between. So as advanced function students and wanting to draw accurate graphs, what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we correctly plot our x-intercepts. And the second thing we do is we make sure that we've got the at least the correct direction of the graph. And then for the third part, to try and at least get something that is, you know, hopefully closely resembling what the actual graph looks like, is we do, generally speaking, take the midpoint between the x-intercepts and then use that as a estimate of the approximate location of the maximum or minimum and then plug that in. So like for example in, in this equation it might be that we have our equation y equals 1 right x plus 6 uh, x minus 1 x minus 4 and let's just say for argument's sake that I want to make sure that my graph I get that point there somewhat accurate. So what I would do is I would say, well, okay, I don't know for sure because I don't have, it's not a parabola where I can guarantee that the maximum will occur or the minimum will occur between the x-intercepts, but I'll still use that as an estimate. So what is the midpoint between negative 6 and positive 1? Well, negative 6 plus 1 divided by 2 is negative 5 over 2. So that's equal to negative 2.5. So then what I would do is I would simply plug in negative 2.5 into my uh, equation, and I would use that as my estimate for the place where the uh, local maximum is located. So in this case, that would be y equals 1 bracket 2.5 plus 6 bracket 2.5 minus 1 bracket 2.5 minus 4 and then when we do all that math right we get 1 times 8.5 times 1.5 times negative 1.5 wait is that right 2.5 minus 4 uh, yeah and okay so we I must have made some mistake there uh, because, oh yes, you see what a mistake I made, and I do apologize, I, I should have plugged in negative 2.5 here, right? So we got negative 2.5 times, or plus 6, times uh, negative 2.5 minus 1, so negative 3.5, times negative 6.5, and that gives us a value of, believe it or not, 79.625. So my graph is way off in terms of how high it should be. It should be much higher than that. Of course, I didn't put a scale on the graph, so there's no way of telling. But my point back to the beginning is when it comes to graphing higher degree polynomial functions like cubic and quartic functions, um, we cannot assume that the local maximums and minimums will occur directly at the midpoint between the x-intercepts. What we can do, though, is take the midpoint as an estimate and at least come up with a general idea of what the function looks like. 
If you want to get the exact location of the uh, local minimums and local maximums, you have two options. Number one is you could graph it using Desmos. And number two is you can take the calculus course that you hopefully are enrolled for next semester in which we tell you quick and efficient ways to figure out those key critical local maximum and minimum values that exist on higher degree functions. Hope you found that helpful, but just keep that in mind. It's an important consideration when we talk about advanced functions and uh, graphing equations.